Hey guys, it seems like everyone and their cat is making SSDs now, and Asus has joined the ranks with the ROG Strix SQ7 drive. It is a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 drive using Fison controller and Micron's TLC flash, but is it even worth considering it in the current market? Let's check it out. Let's first start with the components on this drive. It seems to feature four 256GB Micron TLC flash modules. These are 176 layer chips. It also features Fison E18 based controller as well as DDR4 cache. While this drive does not come with any fancy heatsink, it does still have copper heat spreader under the label. To be fair, motherboards come with pretty good heatsinks, so you're already covered here. And hey, Asus makes them too. When it comes to performance, Asus is advertising this drive capable of 7000 megabytes per second read speed and 6000 megabytes per second write speed. At this same time, they do straight away add an asterisk to say actual speed may vary due to device testing and configuration, which is true, but also indicating that advertised speeds is best case scenarios. Spoiler alert, our testing didn't hit the numbers, but we're pretty damn close. More on that a bit later on. Personally, besides raw transfer speed, you should also be looking at their high input output per second IOPS performance. This represents how quickly the device can read and write commands per second. Surprisingly, Asus does not publish this info on their website, but they were kind enough to share a full specification sheet that mentions it. Here we see up to 750,000 read and 1 million write IOPS. This is very similar to the drives in the same class such as Seagate Firecuda and WD Black SN850. The other thing that should be considered is drive endurance. All SSDs over time wear out, and depending on your workloads, this may or may not be important to you. For example, if you are a standard user who installs games from time to time and just uses PC normally, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I have a drive from 2017 that I've used in three separate PC upgrades and is still working on our server, with over 90 terabytes written to it, and it's running without any problems. On the other hand, if you're using the drive in a video editing PC while it's being used for caching, then the amount of data written may be considerably more. For example, in our editing workstation, this NVMe drive collected over 100 terabytes written in just over two years, and we only recently started working with larger project files. With this in mind, Asus drive is rated to handle 1,400 terabytes of writes, which is even in heavy use will likely outlast the drive technology. Probably in three or five years time, you'll likely upgrade to a more modern drive with higher storage and much faster performance. For peace of mind, this drive also comes with five year warranty. Before we get into the testing, I'd like to mention a few extra features on this drive. For security focused users, this drive includes AES 256 bit full disk hardware encryption and is compliant with TCG Opel V2 and IEEE 1667 standards. And lastly, it comes with ROG SSD dashboard to get all the stats for the drive. There is also NTI Backup Now software for those who currently don't have any tool for that, which is a nice value add. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. Now, let's get into the benchmarks and poke around Asus marketing, starting with Crystal Dismark. Here we are running our test bench with Intel 11900K. We are just shy of 7000 megabytes read speed and just shy of 6000 megabytes write speed, which is really close to the spec, which is actually rather surprising. IOPS results on the other hand are slightly harder to match to the spec as we don't know exactly the test they did. For more detailed analysis, we also ran ATTO benchmark in both 256 megabytes and 32 gigabyte file sizes. Here when it comes to speed, they have very similar results across both. When it comes to IOPS, the performance on a 256 megabyte files is slightly higher, but not by a significant amount. This is because in both scenarios, this drive stays at essentially full speed of its up to 110 gigabytes of SLC cache. It is not true SLC cache as such, as it does not actually have any SLC flash on board. Rather, it utilizes SLC buffer where it uses spare capacity on the drive in the faster SLC mode as cache during the burst operations and then offloads it to the rest of the drive as and when possible. This benefits majority of users while keeping SSD much cheaper than an actual SLC drive. One thing to consider, as the drive is filling up, the potential cache amount will reduce as will the speed. For this, we actually ran a H2 test, which essentially does a non-stop write to the drive until the drive is full and then does non-stop reading. 
This is the absolute worst case scenario and even with this in mind, we get over 900 megabytes per second average write speed and 1.1 gigabytes per second read speed, which is in my opinion plenty. This leads us to the conclusion. We set out to get all the information about this drive and I hope we've covered enough for you to be informed. While we are not able to make direct comparisons, I did find the drive performance to be good enough for an average user. Considering it is compatible with PS5, I can see many people buying it for that exact reason. My main concern here is the price. In Singapore, it has an MSRP of 299 Singapore dollars. With the current promotion when bought together with a Z690 motherboard, the price drops down to 249. But at the same time, there are drives on the market from WD and Seagate closer to 200. So I need to see what kind of metrics are more important to you. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.